when we start with the term tourism it has been said that this particular word was coined from a greek word which came from a latin word torno or tornes this particular word means a circle now what is the relation between a circle and tourism the word tornes circle states that when a person starts traveling from his origin place he moves to various places and then he comes back to his origin place so that is creating a circle hence this tourism word was coined as said by matheson and wall the temporary movement of people to destinations outside their usual places of work and residence and the activities undertaken during their stay in those destinations and the facilities created to cater to their needs so they have described the word tourism with a very important word temporary movement temporary movement is the right principle to be used because a person going for a business purpose and making his livelihood for a permanent uh, reason in any particular place will not be termed as tourism it should be temporary movement say for example tourist visiting to another places to see the at- natural attractions a uh, student going for education purposes a person going for a medical purpose uh, a traveler going for a pilgrimage purpose a person going for uh, leisure activities or meet their friends and relatives will be termed as tourism not a permanent stay in any destination would be considered as tourism there is one more point which i would like to highlight under the word temporary uh, a tourism word is been accepted when a traveler goes to a place for more than 24 hours now why 24 hours because the contribution of traveler to that destination economy should be for a stay for an overnight stay then only it will results as to the business activity of tourism what they have this matheson and wall has defined that the f- using of the facilities the activities undertaken at that place should be incorporated in tourism activity the same thing is been elaborated in the next slide which has been uh, speaking about what does tourist mean so here we can see a tourist is a person who travels at least 80 km from his or her home for at least 24 hours so this is very important because it is all related to the contribution to that destination through economy point of view through a uh, generation of employment for the people residing at those attractions so this is the reason one has to keep in mind whom to be called as a tourist so for example if i am visiting to a place which is just 25 kilometers from my place i usually commute for my uh, official activities which is 25 to 30 kilometers and i uh, work and come back within 8 hours that doesn't means that i am involved into tourism so it should be more than 80 kilometers and there should be number of hours of the person staying in that place should be for more than 24 hours so that he is or she is using the facilities which is available in the attraction in the particular spot the united nations world tourism organization the acronym of it is unwto in 1995 has break down this definition uh in three distinguished points that is a tourist can be stated as a domestic tourist inbound tourist and outbound tourist let me explain domestic tourist are tourist who travel within their own country so if i am traveling from karnataka to kashmir karnataka to mumbai that is called as a domestic tourist and in fact it is also known as domestic tourism inbound tourist inbound tourist that is non residents traveling in a given country so if i get visitors from australia or i get visitors from canada 
these that those people will be called as inbound tourists and the phenomenon the process will be called as inbound tourism outbound tourists are a person going to another country so if i am visiting australia if i am visiting to canada i am called as i will be called as outbound tourist and for them i will be inbound tourist and i am in the process of outbound tourism now we will discuss in deep the concept of visitor what does visitor means visitor is any person who is visiting a country other than in which he she has usual place of residence for any other reason than following an occupation from within the country visited visitor may be further categorized as excursionist and tourist so now we can see that visitor is a big concept it's a big umbrella under which the two concepts of excursionist and tourist come so any person traveling from his her own place to another place okay for any reason so as i said the reason could be visiting friends or relatives pilgrimage activity education activity medical purpose leisure activity adventure activity but now the two two things are either i am going for more than 24 hours if i am going for more than 24 hours then i am a tourist if i am going just for a uh, say 12 hours activity or within a day activity then i will be termed as an excursionist the same thing has been explained an excursionist is a day visitor who stays for less than 24 hours at a place an example is also given uh, an excursionist going from pune to lonavala early in the morning and then returning late in the evening will be called as an excursionist tourist a temporary visitor so here the important point is we need to uh, highlight this temporary word all the time because it should not be a permanent stay so a, t- a temporary visitor to a place uh, which is at least 24 hours of stay it could be for any purposes which i have stated earlier the thing which i have already explained based on the types of tourists that is domestic tourist inbound tourist and outbound tourist we will be describing the concept of tourism in the same way domestic tourism inbound tourism and outbound tourism it been found that many people get uh, students especially students get confused with the word inbound and outbound so i'll make it very easy when we say inbound means when you get visitors into your country okay so that is called as inbound tourism and when you have tourist or yourself your countrymen going out of your country it is called as outbound tourism and domestic tourism by the word itself it is very easy moving within the periphery of your country to other states to other places within your country international tourism so which is a form of uh, you can say it will involve both inbound and outbound concept so where uh, people traveling from one country to another crossing the national borders is known as international tourism and the person who is involved in the movement is known as international tourist now guys a traveler the this concept a traveler is a person who travels from one place to another irrespective of the purpose of travel distance travel or duration of stay will be known as a traveler so here there is a uh, basic thin line difference between a tourist and a traveler a traveler can be any person who is traveling whether he is staying or not staying whether it is for 24 hours or 80 kilometers is not under the uh, purview of the term traveler transit visitor by the word itself a person who passes a country so uh, we could uh, hear from many people that they had a lay off uh, plane a connecting flight where they were required to uh, stay in the airport for 4 hours couple of hours or in the city for some some duration to get connected to other uh, mode of transportation so that type of person will be known as a transit visitor so you can see a traveler 
or a visitor who passes through a country without breaking journey other than for taking connecting transport so this word connecting transport gives the meaning of transit visitor what is hospitality hospitality is all about how we receive people how we give them the services and how we make them comfort in one place so it involves the physiological and psychological comfort and security to the guests so it's like especially when we say hospitality is always related related with the term guests so it's all about providing the necessary services it could be services of food transportation amenities which are like uh, giving them the pleasure giving them the services which is required for a comfort stay in that particular place so hotel services guide services entertainment services your healthcare services the transport services all will be under hospitality sector destination i guess i have used this word again will describe in detail destination as i said the origin place would be your place where you start moving to a particular place so origin is a place from where you start moving to a particular place so that particular place is called as a destination so as i said if i am going for an uh, international tourism if i move from my place to canada so canada would be the destination so it could be a place where a person goes for say a natural attraction or for a leisure activity or for a business uh, again now here the point to be considered is business activity it should not be a permanent stay business activity of like say meetings uh, exhibition conferences so all this could be at a particular destination so what this particular definition says a destination is the place where tourists travel for leisure or business related activities and it could be other purposes as well like the pilgrimage the education the medical it is a place where the tourist product is located and consumed so all those things which i have said like the the hotel stay the entertainment guide activity transport activity uh, the spiritual activity which is been involved in that particular place is consumed destinations can be spread over a wide geographical area and it is the reason for tourism to exist without a destination there would be no tourism so that's rightly said if we don't have a place to visit if we don't have an attraction where a tourist can go and enjoy tourism will not be into existence and when we gradually discuss the evolution of tourism we'll again uh, understand how destination had played a vital role in tourism the images and positive perception that people have of a destination draw, draw tourists to the place so that is very important Uh, how a destination image is created so uh, there are uh, stages of image development which i will be uh, walking you through the concept of image development in the later sessions of this particular course as we are discussing the concepts of tourism we need to understand the major elements of tourism so the major element of uh, tourism we can see here one is destination second is the attraction so the attraction point at that particular place transportation activities okay so transportation the mode of thing which is involved uh, accommodation the stay where a tourist will be staying and then the other ancillary activities so which is involved into like amenities or uh, guide services entertainment services all this comes under ancillary services so this is uh, when we talk about in management concepts a product which has the other components in its product so tourism the destination is a core product but without these other components the product is incomplete so we'll understand in detail 
what are the elements which are involved in a destination when we talk about a destination and the attraction it is all about whether the destination is having a good weather whether the destination is having a, a scenic beauty or a natural attraction say for a hill station a lake a water body beaches and i said a good weather sunny warm places and a family place with lots of activities or it could be a man made attraction also so like a fort a, a museum a theme park an entertainment zone kids zone so all these things will be a man made attractions and uh, a destination without a good experience cannot be termed as a destination so how the destinations create that experience for the tourist to get motivated to go and stay is very important so when we talk about uh, coastal areas we know in india we have this uh, western ghats as well as uh, the eastern uh, uh, places which are near to the beaches bay of bengal and indian ocean so these places are what to say very towards the coastal areas attracts people more especially when anybody talks about beach goa comes to one's mind and then if anybody talks about international places then miami florida these are the places which comes to some uh, many people's mind cloudy or when we say cold then switzerland and in india when we talk about himachal pradesh as a cold place so how the image of a destination is created uh, is because of these points these elements and the attractions which are there at that particular place accessibility the another term to accessibility is the mode of transportations which are utilized to provide access to that particular place whether the place is easily accessible or not is very important for tourism so if a place which is uh, not having good access will not be utilized by the tourists so when we talk about the north eastern part of india the accessibility is a point is an issue where it is not been uh, what to say considered by most of the tourists but i would say as a point of view when sustainability point of view is a uh, factor to be considered we should give tourist a experience of uh, getting to that place on their own crossing rivers or say uh, you know the uneven paths so that they can enjoy that adventure of the place so that is also to some extent is required the historical and cultural factors the history behind a place is very important element in tourism many places are known for the history so when we talk about in india itself we are known for since from the mughal time british time the evolution which we had in these uh, say from 15th century to 19th century so that history plays an important role and how the culture has evolved gradually same way most of the countries have their vast history which is required to be experienced so here it is mentioned places with historical events are rome berlin lumbini so these are the european places which are having their own pasts and there are uh, good monuments good museums to visit and understand the history the other thing which we need to uh, talk about is uh, as i was talking about a place having lesser accessibility will have lesser uh, influx of tourist whereas a place say for example it's given here uh, singapore is is a big air traffic hub in fact it is uh, uh, one of the top 10 in international uh, destination which has uh, maximum flow of international tourist so foreign tourist arrivals so that is the reason the accessibility plays an important role in tourism amenities 
what are the facilities which are being provided in the destination or in the journey for the tourist to make them feel comfort is important so facilities could be the shopping facilities the guide services the entertainment uh, any kind of a luxury uh, products say for example a spa activity so these things are considered as amenities food and beverage uh, facilities is a part and an element of tourism hospitality which i have already explained in the earlier slide it's what kind of facilities what kind of comfort is given to a guest is termed as hospitality it's like if a good services is given to a guest a person feels a home away from home so this is a thing which was all most of the time been said especially for hotel so what type of hospitality services they provide so that a guest should feel a home away from home now when we talk about in a destination the hospitality by the local people to travel has created lots of invention and because of the invention people started traveling in masses from uh, the homo sapien time uh, just for the sake of shelter people tra travel from one place to another for safety for food and then uh, business came into existence in the medieval period people started colonizing people started for the uh, traveling for the reason of trade military control so the tourism started taking its shape since from our ancient period itself and then there are various travelers who are known in the past who have traveled uh, which i will be exp explaining here also so in the historical development of tourism when we talk about we have the various uh, periods of travel one is called as the prehistoric period travel the other is ancient travel third is the medieval and the empire era and the last is the modern era of travel so here when we talk about the stages of travel development we can see the prehistoric period travel where the early man he started traveling from 2 million to 20000 years ago so as i said the homo erectus they travel from for the search of food uh, for their safety reasons from animals to escape from animals enemies and then they started colonizing uh, making their own territory and making their own society so this uh, involved uh, lots of uh, explorers so all our uh, ancestors whom we don't know those who were homo sapiens are known as big explorers great explorers then came the ancient time travel uh, which is noted in the history where we can see that uh, people was confined to travel in european middle east north america north africa for uh, the say religious activities or uh, enslaving activities or you know getting the power so uh, this is what was all about in the ancient time in during the 3rd century the middle ages and the renaissance era when we talk about in this it was uh, in 5th to 14th centuries because of the renaissance era we could see lots of trading activities being developed in the tourism industry where we saw use of sh ship cruises and uh, people traveling in groups during the renaissance era but one thing in the middle ages the travel was little uh, dangerous because of the rule system of the various uh, empires their feudal system and which created a sense of insecurity among people so there was a little uh, the travel became little dangerous during that 
period and then after that in the renaissance era we saw a lot of transportations uh, emerging currencies languages coming into existence as i said the contribution of marco polo's travel is been noted in the history how he travel from middle east to china and he has seen the various cultures and were noted in his book then we saw lots of movement of merchants uh, for commercial basis for commercial activities the important era which is to be noted in tourism is the grand tour era where the tourism for the sake of leisure for the sake of uh, making the wealthy people understand the culture of civilized society and to study about arts and science came into existence it was in the grand tour era in 16th century 1613 to 1785 where lots of uh, travel happened where this uh, english britishers they wanted to make their kids aware about the other part of the european continent so we could see as i have earlier spoken uh, when we talk about tourism as a business product we need to owe to mr thomas cook who coined the concept of uh, group travel uh, who was the first person to start with the railway commission based travel for group of people and he developed various tour packages and he was the person who started with the guide book for people to know about places then came the empire era where uh, we saw how egyptians and uh, you know the greek they came up uh, there was a uh, rift and then there was a fall of the roman empire and uh, it it led to various uh, kinds of enslaving activities uh, there was even uh, good developments of uh, governmental commercial educational religious activities where lots of cities and states were developed so this is how it looked in empire era the the mode basic mode of transportation you can see was to the ships the factors which influenced people to travel during this was they had money they there was uh, the currency acceptance was widely available the languages amongst them so basically it was in the uh, european continent the travel was mostly to be observed then came uh, the travel for business purposes pleasure purposes leisure activities and uh, then the involvement of various uh, amenities was uh, seen in the empire era uh, when he started with the services of rail services which was a commission based tour for uh, the european people in 1842 and he made a, a short trip from lancaster to bora so this is how the travel business emerged because of mr thomas cook we'll explain in detail now uh, based on the contribution of the greeks in the empire era we can see that uh, majorly the greek were the people who have uh, written in the history their travel stages how they travel their main reason to travel was pleasure and then uh, they have gradually in the travel they have developed currencies the communication so the trading part started existing in empire era and the romans they also did a lot of development they developed in the travel industry they started making middle class to travel a lot 
and lots of roads transportation communication systems the rest house the inns villas uh, came into existence because of the romans then came the time which is called as the modern to, modern era time after 1945 uh where we can see people started traveling for mostly the business activities and uh, here you, we can see that it was uh, which was shown in the video it was because of the holiday the paid vacation the understanding of uh, fun leisure and uh, happy life people started traveling more in uh, industrial period also because of the business activity the traveling boomed like anything and uh, the development of boeing air buses jet planes has also contributed a lot the other part when we talk about is this modern tourism where in the video it also is shown that how the private planes that is the helicopters jet planes helped in people traveling for business purposes as well as uh, when we talk about the concept of space tourism which is which is emerging and uh, the owner of virgin group mr richard branson wants to start with the business of space tourism his 2020 goal is have uh, faced a little failure but he is still trying for the space tourism concept to be uh, what to say as a business to emerge in the market so here we can see the various milestones how the tourism has evolved so in 4000 bc the invention of money so because of the trading purposes 5th to 15th century which is the middle age as i said to you which was a dark era of tourism because of the colonization the enslaving activities so there was a little uh, insecurity among people to travel then came the renaissance stage where people started traveling more for business activities uh, using steamships there so the same in 18th century uh, introduction of steamboat came the first passenger train service came into 1830 then uh, mr thomas uh, cook started with a special excursion train from leicester to lobro in england and gradually he introduced the hotel voucher where a tourist can just produce the voucher to the hoteliers and stay and he has to pay the tourist has to pay the money to the travel agencies so that's he brought in the concept the actual business of tourism and he was the first to uh, come up with the world trip well organized round the world trip uh, and it was uh, started in 1872 mr thomas cook introduced a circular note which is uh, in 1873 for the tourism businesses to run their businesses seamlessly uh, so this was among the various agencies to do the transactions and then we can see that uh, the carlton hotel was started operating in 1888 and lots of uh, hotel opened up big hotels opened up in the uh, european continent then uh, as it was shown in the video the right brothers they invented airplane and the commercial flight uh, from kitty hawk which was in north carolina and then uh, it was a big boom in the travel industry the major hotel uh, chain company was the trust houses they opened a chain of hotels in britain in 1903 and then in 1920 we could see that charter flight planes um, appeared in travel and tourism industry uh, in 1945 there this uh, big organization which contributes a lot in tourism industry that is ita international air transport association was established who started the organizing the movement of air travel looking into the factor of passenger safety and the airlines uh, seamless operation 
so the international union of official travel organization was constituted in 1947 which was the predecessor of uh, world tourism organization with the aim of widening the international travel organizations then in 1950 we saw commercial air transportation increase and then lots of uh, cheap air travel started happening and people started uh, utilizing air as a their main mode of travel in 1958 boeing 707 was introduced which was a big development then uh, 1966 united federation travel agents association was founded where the establishment of travel industry agencies came into existence another development in 1970 first wide body boeing 747 which has a lot of capacity of carrying 400 packs was uh, invented and then 1975 world tourism organization which is known as uh, now united nations world tourism organization had its legal existence to help the tourism industry exist with proper uh, cooperation of various bodies so these are the references uh, which are been utilized for session i hope you would have uh, understood the basics of the concept of tourism the meaning of uh, tourist excursion their differentiation the meaning of inbound outbound and domestic international tourism we try to understand how inventions of travel came into existence and how people started traveling from the ancient era to the modern era and we explained we explored the various forms of invention and the various milestones in travel and tourism industry thank you in the next session we will try to understand about the concept of tourism as a product the various a's which are involved in tourism the primary and secondary components of tourism hope you liked the video thank you